Welcome to In The Workshop. In this episode I will be machining a part for the telehandler using a very hard piece of steel. The question is, what is a telehandler? It's a very large four-wheel drive vehicle where the wheels steer independently and it has a very long hydraulic arm that sticks out and you can attach things to this. The part that I'm making is one of two pins which allows the attachment and removal of a bucket to the end of the long hydraulic arm. I looked through my stock of steel and the largest piece I had was only three quarters of an inch in diameter. Luckily my son-in-law Rob, who owns the telehandler and uses it on his farm, found this bit of broken half shaft, so I'm going to use this to make the part. My smart and brown lathe would be much better to do this job because it's a lot bigger and stronger but it's not ready for use yet, I'm painting it. So I'm using the Boxford, and unfortunately this is a three-phase machine with a three-phase converter. I say unfortunately because at the moment the voltage on the mains in the village is low. That's why it's doing this and kicking in and out. How did I fix this, you may be thinking. Here in take two I speeded up the lathe and put less pressure on the belts and it seemed to work fine. It was just on the edge though all the time. Occasionally in the village where I live the mains goes a bit wrong. One of the phases went down I think and 39 houses had no electricity and it's come back on but it's not right, the voltage is low. During this video you will hear chattering, you will see rings appearing around the work. Please don't write in, I know about this and I'm doing it on purpose. Why is it chattering? The steel is very hard. Why are there rings on the work? Probably because the tool is sticking far too far out of the tool holder. Why is this? It's so that you can actually see what's going on without the tool post being in the way. If this was a piece of mild steel made from free cutting mild steel, then cutting it and getting a good finish would have been simpler. Or I could have used a different cutting tool, fitted much closer to the tool post, and then I could put more pressure on and I would have got a better cut. When I was making this part, I didn't really know what it was for. My son-in-law explained that it held the bucket in place, but I didn't have a concept of it. Only when I returned the finished part to him did he show me what it did. All I have to work on is the other pin. I'm just going to copy it, although this one is a bit shorter. But I'm sure it will be okay. When I bought the Nutlink belting from a local company, I also bought some metal cutting spray. But as you can see, it really smokes badly. This is one job where soluble oil dripping onto the work will be very useful, but unfortunately I do not have a coolant service. There is actually a coolant pump fitted to this box with lathe, but when it was wired in, the shaft to the on-off switch was live, so I thought it was probably a good idea to disconnect it. And here I am with my micrometer, being really picky as to the diameter which I now know to be a complete waste of time. The tolerance on the part of the machine that this fits is about a quarter of an inch all the way around the bushes on the bucket and on the machine. But nevertheless, I'm trying to copy an original part, so I need to make sure that this is exactly the same size. This job really would have been a lot simpler if it had used the Smart and Brown, because the entire bar would have fitted in the spindle and I could have machined the chamfer closer to the chuck. Here I'm checking that the diameter corresponds to the other part that I'm copying. Once I'd machined the chamfer, I turned the part round in the chuck. Luckily there was already a centre hole in this end, so I could use the live centre to finish the other end of the bar. I just need to turn away this piece of thread. That didn't take long at all, just a couple of passes. I thought I would clean up the part using a piece of emery cloth to finish it off. To be honest it didn't make much difference and the end of the bar has been ground very roughly. But I'm really not worried about this at all for the application it's going to be used for. I'm lining up the hole that was already drilled in the piece that I've just machined because I felt that drilling another hole at the end would weaken the part. I'm using my marker pen to copy this angle of the original part. And now it's over to the milling machine. I've sprayed the work with some more of this metal cutting spray because I don't want to destroy my end mill on this really hard piece of steel. But I don't like it, it's still smoking. The other thing is it sprays out all over the place and it's not as good as steam cylinder oil. 
That's what I normally use for jobs like this because it's very sticky and it stays on the work longer. This is not model engineering, but from time to time, friends will give you pieces of steel saying, here, do you want this piece of steel? It's a half shaft from a lorry. It will be fine for making your models. Or alternatively, occasionally people say, can you make me this part for my tractor? But anyway, it worked out okay. And this is about as far as I need to take this episode. I gave the original part and the one that I'd made back to my son-in-law, and it fitted perfectly on the telehandler. And the good news is, I didn't break my lathe tool, and I didn't ruin the cutter. As a parting note, I would just like to say, if you're buying mild steel commercially, I recommend using the free cutting stuff, particularly in the home workshop if you have a small lathe. And that's it for this episode. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.